Welcome back to the MLG Winter Championships. Going straight into game three here on MLG and Tombed Valley. Can Huck take the win here or is Hart going to seal the deal? Well, as we saw last game, Huck used the tools that he had available that time, right? Yep. Hart tried going for a heavy aggression, but Huck has the talent, has the builds to hold it off. Yeah, we saw actually in the uh, pregame chat, Huck was talking about game one a little bit and still somewhat upset after that uh, kind of excruciating loss. Well, I mean, when he goes back and watches that game, he will he will fully see that he had the power to, to stop that and, and take that with ease. Yeah. And so here, moving into game three, playing as the Red Protoss, representing Team Evil Geniuses. He is only one win away from taking this. Let's hear it for Huck. And his opponent playing for Team Complexity as the Blue Terran. Give a cheer for Hart. Now, last game we saw Hart change it up, not go for that one-on-one. -on -one. Didn't work out so well. I feel like he missed his uh, opportunities to attack there uh, for so long. He moved that factory into the uh, main base, and that basically just told Huck that something was coming, and he warped in more stalkers, and that thwarted that entire drop plan that Hart had in mind. So, oh, the pylons were so yeah, sick. The pylons were pretty good from Huck. That's a, a great way to stop the maneuverability of those drops, which oftentimes is one of the most annoying things as right. a Protoss player. Because stimmed infantry just moves too, I mean, too fast. It's too fast, JP. Yeah, yeah it really, really is. So. See Hart doing the uh, refinery now and uh, dropping the racks. So still, once again, no one racks expand. I think Hugs probably just going to do the same thing. You know, it's worked out well for him. It's, it's very safe play. Uh, doesn't have any risk involved. You see exactly what your opponent is up to. Your economy is strong, and you can defend against almost anything uh, with that proper scouting. And Huck being the, the small advantage player that he already is, is, is just always going to end up ahead on economy at one point in the game anyway. And as long as he plays standard and gets his opponent into a situation where he's going to have to not do what he wants to do, then he's already ahead. So I do suspect uh, that this Rex will have a reactor on it like uh, we've seen in two games now from Hart Huck. I mean, the hand uh, does have a Cybernetics core going down and probably is going for more of the same, actually. Which, I mean, that... Yes, yeah. yes, because that will work for him. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, ladies and gentlemen. And he's adding on a reactor once again, so this is a very similar opening to the first game, although he has added on a second refinery. And will we be seeing this factory right afterwards? Mm -hmm. It might be, once again, that one-on-one -on -one that worked so well for him in game one. Yeah, but even, I mean, even though it worked well for him, uh, Huck could have stopped it, right? Like, he knows, he knows that Huck could have stopped that, right? Right, right. I, I think. I mean, it, it was, it was. I mean, you can't close. watch, you can't watch your replays in between games here, so maybe he's not able to check that out. Right. He's confident with his Banshee micro. Right. He lost the game that he didn't have Banshee's two micro, and I mean, or, or Huck is playing super mind games. Like, yeah, I'll let you win with a strategy. I know I can crush game one, so that you uh -oh. do it again. But Huck, oh man, with tricks up his sleeve, placing down three proxy pylons. Wow, gateways. Those aren't pylons. They don't give him supply. They cost it. Looks like he's going to go for a surprise four gate here. And, you know, if that hits before Hart can really get some forces out, he's going to have Marines. Probably won't have a tank. I would suspect just a Banshee in his army uh, right around the time when this four gate hits. He's going to be very, very strong. As there is the starport going down, he does have this nice wall off that Huck will have to break through. But this might uh, be the best set that Huck is. It's so smart to be able to do something like this, just completely surprise your opponent. Because right. two games in a row, I was mentioning the fact that he has Played gone for that standard. quick nexus. Yeah. And now in game three, where everything's on the line, why not risk it all? And it's double smart because because of how warp gates work, these actually, I mean, they can build units anywhere, right? So he's just hiding it to force his opponent into thinking things. Although we see that Hart hasn't scouted his base at all, so I don't yeah. think that Huck is going to have the same surprise effect that, that he'd hoped for. Yeah, I believe, yeah, one of the Stalkers actually got the kill on the SCV here in the center of the map, and he also has a probe right down the ramp, so if anything moves out, Huck will be able just to take it out, and there we see it. Cloak started as well as that first Banshee. Warp Gate has finished. It looks like Huck is moving in, waiting for that first warp, and there we go as some uh, sentries are being warped in, as well as three zones. Oh man, this is going to turn into Oh no, if he gets the force field behind Whoa, that, those yeah. oh, are trapped! Oh, he stops the humans, they that are trapped outside great. of his own base! Huge play from Hart! And Hart is now doing his best to control the Marines, but he is losing so, so much there. 
Huck saw that force build. He saw somewhat hesitation with that sentry, but he moved forward and dropped it, and now Huck is going to move all the way in. Oh. As CVs have been pulled, there is just nothing for Hart here. The Banshee pops out, pokes on halfway, though. Mass repair going down, 49 to 33 supply. I think Huck might have just won this game. This puts Hart in there. This puts Hart in a terrible position. Huck clearly has the upper hand now, although he is still able to hold the front of his base. Now, once that cloak finishes, it's going to stop Huck from being able to push until the Observer makes it all the way across the map. But just catching all of those Marines out of position was so valuable. See a Forge going down now. He does not, oh, he actually does have that robotic facility back in the main with an Observer already coming out. Huck is just going to fall back into the center of the map right now. The Banshee is already on its way over to the main base of Huck here. And we'll see here. You know, Huck might just fall back and be prepared for this 1-1-1. Uh, well, Huck, Huck is actually building a forge as well. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe he's going to end up getting, he's gonna get a one. We'll see in a couple seconds. Oh, he's throwing down a cannon, which makes sense because he doesn't want the Banshee to be the one mechanic that forces him to lose the game, and now he's staying active on the map so that he can keep the Observer up with his army while his main is still covered by that cannon. Absolutely. The Banshee is moving, but Huck is moving up the ramp as well, starting to do some damage on those duplas. You've got to be careful, uh, though. That, that one Banshee and that tanker used to deal so much damage. Meanwhile, in the main base, the Banshee already taking out one stalker, doing his best to take out another one. Huck hasn't fully moved in yet. The Observer is right on top of the ramp, though. Yeah, and so Huck's in an awkward position. Being in a one-base stalemate like this is going to be difficult for him to deal with because his opponent can repair the front of his base, although he is not. Now we see that Banshee continuing to get additional kills, and this, this is what Huck needs to do. He needs to get those supply depots down. He can reach them from out of range of his opponent. Well, well and the Banshee's taken down. Yeah. The, yeah. The oh, yeah. <laughs> The longer that Huck waits here, I'm getting kind of scared for, for him because Hart's army is just going to get bigger and bigger. If he gets Siege Mode out and this Raven out, then it's going to be really, really, really hard to stop. Well, just clearly, the Terran player is always able to mine faster out of one base. That's what mules do for you. Right, So right, if right. they do end up in a stalemate and Hart is able to last long enough, he will have a larger force when the engagement finally happens. But Huck, making smart decisions like he always does, feigning aggression at the front of Hart's base while he expands behind. And if he can keep this army of Hart's uh, in his main base with these stalkers, and just running away, you know, it just gives you so much, so much good things for him. Army of Hearts sounded really cool. That was what that <laughs> sniffle was for. There you, go. there you go. All right, so the Raven is out. And I would suspect that he's going to wait to move till it has around 90. Oh, he's just going to go for it right now. He could. Research. Well, he has he's enough stuff. Observer. Yeah, here we go. He has enough stuff to fight off all of the Oh, stocks. no, that oh. is not good. As now the Banshees can just get chased there with Cloak. It looks like Arsh is going to clean up the pylons for now. Oh, man, yeah, the Observer, I think. Is that what you were saying that the yeah. Observer was taken out there? Because yeah. obviously the Raven got out there unsuspecting to him. And now we see Huck taking down the Destructible Rocks on the left side of his base. Could he potentially go for a three-phase play? He's just so low on probes, so though. He absolutely does not need yet another Nexus. And now those Banshees cleaning up the pylon. And out here, Huck's uh, natural is just about done. He's also got some Immortals coming out. Those are going to be crucial to stop this oncoming attack. Will he pull SCVs with this? Not yet, at least, as these Stalkers are picking off some of the Marines, and that's just so, so good for Huck, as he's going to make that army size smaller and smaller as he gets back over to his base. Now Huck's working in some more Zealots up at home. He's trying to micro as much as he can. Oh, man, and Hart is actually leapfrogging, I guess, with his siege tanks, although now it just seems like he's going to be securing the center of the map. He hasn't been working on a command center back at home, so this is pretty much the, the last card in Hart's hand. And he's kind of just sitting in the middle of the map, like you were mentioning. I'm wondering why Hart is not just going for it. He does have another Banshee come out. Combat Shield, of course, a very crucial upgrade. That's obviously what he is waiting for at this stage in the game. As are the yeah. SCVs going to be joining this attack? I mean, he's on one base. He's really got to go for it all. So I would think that he's going to do that. But here come two Banshees. Oh. They're going to start focusing down those sentries. Yes. One of them going down. The other oh. one, 3 HP, and it falls as well. The Observer now finally joining those stalkers and will they get a banshee kill no they're going to be able to get away oh maybe not oh man well that was two huge century kills because they had just about full energy oh my gosh the stalkers are still able to get right under the banshees but the observer is just too slow to make it happen 
And here is one lone zealot to just see what's going on for Huck. See if his opponent has an expansion or if he's basically going all in. Ooh, he's getting very close to taking out those Banshees. He's going to have to get that repaired as soon as possible. Now Hart is going for it. Now Hart is slightly behind the supply. Huck is able to hold this off. He can totally win this series. And Huck is moving up into his base. He has four Immortals in play. Where are those tanks going to see? He says, well, no, Huck needs to stay out of range of this, but he's going in. He's trying to get it. Oh, man, Hart tries on sieging, and Huck absolutely demolishes the tanks. That may have been a bit of a misclick. It's unfortunate for Hart. Huck is trying to capitalize, but there are a lot of Marines out there. And Huck told us there's so many Marines. One of the Immortals falls, one uh. remaining. A lot more stalkers being warped in, but they got to fall back because of that point defense drone. Oh, those Banshees just deal so much damage. Now the stalkers are falling back into the main huck. Should probably pull his probes and wait for them until he gets another round of units in so that he can try to get us around on these remaining units. Oh, those Banshees' damage is just so huge. I think that might be it. It's going to be very, very hard to hold here. There's so much unit just streaming across the map for Hart. This would be a huge win for Complexity and their newest player. And it's looking very grim at this stage for Huck. Oh, man. So, Hart just has so many units out there. I'm... Man, Huck saw the window of opportunity with the tanks on sieging. He tried pushing out, and now he's trying to get over there and pick up that tank, but the point defense drone is still down. Oh, Huck actually lost so many of his probes. It's now 18 SCVs to 17 probes. So him being in a one-day situation with the tank laying down some backup is difficult. Now he gets down a force field. He needs to kill that Banshee. That's the thing dealing most of the damage to him. Huh, so he's just buying a little bit more time. He actually only has one victory and everything is going to get up that ramp. Will the tank actually follow there? He's going to lose this warp gate. Huck is having a hard time dealing with this huge Marine force. And again, Here's another tank to join up, as well as some SCVs to repair. He's going to put them on the low ground. Such smart positioning here for Complexity Heart. Man, it's 30 SCVs and three siege tanks against six stalkers and four zealots. Huck going in for the final push, bringing out some of those probes, trying to get in there. Maybe some of the siege damage will do something to help him, although it's not looking like he's going to be able to push through this. Oh, man, and there goes Huck having to tap out, and Hart takes it 2-1. Congratulations there to Hart. Looks like Huck is just not able to deal with it. I mean, he was kind of uh, talking about it there in the chat, like I had mentioned, and it is very, very hard to deal with. He caught a break there early on with that force field, but Hart was still able to take the win. I mean, Hart had, you know, relatively impeccable control in some of the fights, although in that last engagement, he even... Sieged and then unseaged his tanks, which gave Huck a huge window of opportunity. But you see just how important it is to have that point defense drone in there. Like the Raven is so money in that exchange. Yeah. Yeah. Well, once again, congratulations to Hart Huck, mm -hmm. losing to the first Terran in his group. Now he still has yeah. to play Kawhi Rice, but he's still, I believe, in first. So he's doing mm -hmm. very, very Three good and one now. Yeah. in his pool. And coming up next, right here on the main stage, is going to be DRG going up against Ostoji, a nice little ZBZ. Mm. And that's going to be a huge, huge test for Ostoji. So stick around, guys. We'll be right back with some ZBZ action here on MLG Winter Championships Day 2.